Good morning, church. I am Pastor Ariana Ahrens with Emmanuel Lutheran Church and Lutheran Campus Ministries at Eastern Washington University. In our worship today, we continue our series, one in baptism, one in call. We unite as Methodists and Lutherans and Episcopalians and Congregationalists and most likely many others through the power of the internet to proclaim that God has cleansed and claimed and commissioned us in baptism and called us to be a part of God's mission to love the world. This week also become, begins the week of Christian unity where the World Council of Churches encourages us to pray for all Christ followers worldwide. You will have words on the screen to use in your participation in this service. The bold print is intended for all voices. Some of the music in the liturgy may be unfamiliar. Sing along if you're comfortable or simply listen and enjoy. During today's service, you are invited to participate in the Lord's Supper, Holy Communion, or the Eucharist, whatever language you're most comfortable with for the sacrament of the table. Please pause this video and gather bread or crackers, wine or juice for that part of the service. You are also invited to make this space and time as special and sacred as you can wherever you are worshiping today. Light a candle, place a Bible or a cross in front of you, and during this next musical prelude, center your heart for worship. Maybe think of times you've heard a calling from God to join in his mission to love the world. I pray that you find moments of hope motivation to serve your neighbor, and deeply experience the presence of the divine in this collaborative worship service. Pastor Alyssa Birch and I'm the lead pastor at Cheney United Methodist Church and it's my joy to ask you to join with me first in welcoming God's presence into this time of worship and then into a prayer of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose voice is upon the waters and whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin trusting in the abundant grace of God. I invite you to take a moment for silent reflection. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace! 
Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison on a world and on our way. Kyrie eleison every day. That we may live out your impassioned response to the hungry and the that we may live out truth and justice and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison every day. For peace in our hearts, for peace in our homes,
Please join me in the prayer of the day. Let us pray. O God, you spoke your word and revealed your good news in Jesus the Christ. Fill all creation with that word again, so that by proclaiming your joyful promises to all nations and singing of your glorious hope to all peoples, we may become one living body, your incarnate presence on the earth. Amen. Good day. My name is Pat Sleeth. I'm one of the pastors at Cheney United Methodist Church, and I am delighted to be joining you today from Emmanuel Lutheran Church. It's my uh, privilege today to share the first scripture. It's from the Old Testament book of 1 Samuel, chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days, and visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again, a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Our psalm reading today comes from chapter 139, verses 1 through 6 and 13 through 18. Hear the word of the Lord. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up, you discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth, your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! I try to count them, but they are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel of John, the first chapter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses and the law and and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. 
Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, very truly, I tell you, you will see the heavens opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of our Lord. We have just gotten Disney Plus at our house, a streaming service that lets you watch the many, many shows now owned by the Disney Corporation. We've recently watched the latest Pixar release, Soul. The story follows a middle school music teacher named Joe Gardner, who seeks to reunite his soul and his body after they're accidentally separated just before his big break as a jazz musician. Unwilling to die before his big break, he tries to escape, but ends up assigned to train 22, a cynical soul who sees no point in living on Earth. She needs to find her spark and get to Earth and agrees to give it to Joe so that he can return home. Joe is convinced that this spark is a passion, a calling, a purpose, a vocation, and for Joe, that is playing jazz piano. In our readings today, we hear several stories of calling. Calling? What's that, Pastor? Now, I tried to find some help for us in the dictionary, but quickly was overwhelmed. I just called to say I love you. Like leaving a calling card? Call into question. Call it a day. Call it quits. Call names. And maybe the reason that I find baseball so confusing. The sportscaster called the game on the radio, the umpire called a strike, and the catcher calls a good game. Makes total sense, right? But having a calling or a call from God in churchy language is more about God in mysterious ways involving you in God's mission to love the world. We Lutherans often talk about this as vocation, from Latin, vocare, to call. Now, before Martin Luther decided to nail 95 topics for conversation on the community bulletin board 500 years ago, a vocation was only for those who were religious leaders, priests and monks and nuns and such. But Martin Luther saw God calling all Christ followers. I discovered in writing this sermon that one of my favorite quotes from Martin Luther wasn't actually his. The Christian shoemaker does his Christian duty not by putting little crosses on the shoes, but by making good shoes. Not actually from Luther, sorry. Dr. Fred Geiser says, vocation is a tricky notion. Rightly understood, it sets us free in Christ to give ourselves for service of the neighbor to the glory of God. Wrongly understood, it enslaves us to the boss who now has divine authority to press us to produce cleaner floors. God may indeed like good craftsmanship, but Christian vocation is not finally about production, though production will result, and is not ultimately about satisfaction though it will surely satisfy. It is about the neighbor, about giving oneself to the other in love and service in the glorious freedom of the gospel. And God will welcome all our efforts to that end, however skilled or hesitant they may be. Okay, sorry, my Lutheran nerd face is showing. So what does this have to do with our scripture reading? Samuel who's been dedicated to service to God from before birth, is there sleeping soundly. He's awoken up by someone calling his name. In a time before planes, trains, and automobiles, alarm clocks, cell phones, even appliances like dishwashers and refrigerators, I bet you it was pretty darn quiet. And in that quiet, God spoke to Samuel. How are you fostering quiet time in your life in the midst of all the noise pollution of the 21st century? Are you listening to God as well as speaking to God in prayer? 
Bruce Pruer writes, silence is one of the ways in which God can approach us, address us, soothe us, stir us, call us, and renovate us. In the silence, the word can speak, because silence does not come readily in our noisy, frenetic world. It takes some self-discipline to create space and silence in our lives. You may be just as surprised as Samuel was to be called by God, to speak truth to power, to pull the center of control from the temple, the church building, out into the countrysides, to the very places where people were living and working, just as Samuel was called to do. God may be calling you to serve your neighbor in very surprising ways. Because our psalm says that God was knitting you together in your mother's womb. God's calling comes before our birth. We are claimed as beloved in the waters of birth and baptism. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. God always knows us is always with us, a comforting thought. God's love will always seek and save us. And God always knows us and is always with us, an unsettling thought. God's love will always seek us and convict us of our sin. And we'll learn in our reading from Jonah next week that you can't run away from God. God hems us in with loving kindness so that we might love and serve the world. And that's why he called Sarah and Moses, Deborah, Samuel, Elizabeth, and Mary. And as we hear in our gospel reading, he calls Nathaniel to come and see. This calling, being a Christ follower, is an experience it isn't an intellectual piece of knowledge. It isn't a set of doctrines that you adhere to. It's a way of life, of changing your heart and behavior. And Nathaniel did come and see. He saw Jesus heal and preach against the greedy and the power hungry. He came to the tomb of Lazarus, to the storm-tossed boat on suddenly calm seas. What is it that you are called to or called from? What is it that you are called to see, to witness, to experience? And don't get me wrong, not all of us are called to leave our metaphorical fishnets, to get up from the shade of the fig tree, to follow Christ's calling across the known world. I pray for those of you who are. Most of us are called to point to God's actions, big and small, right in the lives we live now. And that is what Joe Gardner found in the movie Soul. One may not have a calling in life, one passion, one purpose. It may be many and various callings. Wife, daughter, mother, pastor, friend, for example. Joe finds out his amazing barber wanted to be a veterinarian, but gave up that dream and enjoys his new vocation. Joe finds out that the spark needed to live is not a singular item, but a desire to experience all that life has on offer, big and small moments. Dr. Mark Colden writes that for Martin Luther, just as God's redemptive act in becoming incarnate, affirms that salvation is not an escape from creation, but a restoration and fulfillment of it, so also the Christian life will not be an escape from creaturely life, but a calling to it. The call to follow Christ leads not to any religious vocation removed from daily life, but instead it transforms the attitude and the understanding one has of the situation in which one already is. You are called into being that which God knit together in your mother's womb, 
called to come and see the great miracles and everyday moments of a Christ follower, called to witness and testify and point out God's loving works, called to love and serve the neighbor. And so may the God of hope keep you in all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Cheney. I am so glad to be here this morning to worship with you and with my fellow clergy. We confess our shared faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We celebrate the unity of our mission through this month of shared worship, and this week begins a global celebration of Christian unity through the World Council of Churches. We join our hearts with those worldwide in praying for the followers of Christ, the cosmos, and all people in need. 
As we work through the prayers of the people today, there is a response you're invited to say, following hearing me say, Lord, in your mercy, and you'll say, hear our prayer. Let us pray. God of love, through Christ you said to us, you did not choose me, but I choose you. You seek us, you invite us to receive your call and abide in it. Teach us to respond more deeply to this invitation and grow in a life that is ever more complete. Give us poverty of spirit so that we may welcome the unexpectedness of your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, you have created every human being in your image and likeness. We sing your praise for the gift of our many churches, expressions of faith, traditions, and ethnicities. Grant us the courage always to stand against injustice and hatred based on race, class, gender, religion, and fear of those not like ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of incarnation, you call us to many varied callings, each reflecting your loving mercy. Touched by your goodness, grant us reflect that love in our homes, schools, volunteering, and workplaces. May we pave the way for bridging rivalries and overcoming tensions. Open our hearts to forgiveness and reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, gentle and humble of heart, you came into the world and shared fully your humanity. You know the hardships of life for people who suffer in many different ways. We ask you, send us to speak and act on behalf of those who are voiceless or powerless. We ask your courage, healing, and presence with those suffering from physical or mental illness, from isolation, from COVID-19, from loss of work, from abuse or neglect, from hunger, from violence, from estrangement, from racism, from climate change, from houselessness, and for those whose people and situations we name before you now, lifting them to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, keep our hearts yearning for your kingdom, our eyes fixed on your cross, our hands and feet serving our neighbors. May your Holy Spirit intercede for us with sighs too deep for words and answer even the unspoken prayers on our hearts. In your holy name we pray, amen. Part of our worship of God is giving of our talents, our gifts, our possessions, and our time. And so uh, I invite you to wherever you're worshiping from right now to take a moment to commit to healthy ways to give back to God in, in some way this week, uh, whether that be through, through service, through your time, uh, or through financial gifts. And we, uh, we encourage you to use electronic transfer or to mail in your financial gifts to your respective churches uh, if you would like to do so. And the addresses for our various churches uh, should be on the screen uh, for your convenience. As we sing our offertory hymn now together, I'll let this stand as our prayer. Join me in prayer as we bless our offering. O oh God, receive these gifts as you receive us, like a mother receives her child with arms wide open. Nourish us anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with this same love. Through Jesus Christ, our saving grace, amen. 
We not only remember, but we proclaim, we preach to each other and to ourselves that Christ is present for us in, with, and under this simple bread and wine. You are invited to use any bread, cracker, juice, or wine you choose and proclaim that Christ is for you. The Lord be with you and also, and also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them, them to, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to, to give, give our, our thanks, thanks and praise. praise. It is indeed right to give you our thanks and praise, O God, for what we know of you is overwhelmingly more wonderful than we can ever understand. In the hidden depths of time, you formed the newborn earth according to your design and knit us together in our mother's wombs. You led your people through Moses and corrected them through prophets like Samuel, whose every word went forth with your power. In these last days, you have sent us your son, Jesus, son of Mary, from Nazareth. In word and deed, he brought the truth to light and called us to follow in the ways of integrity and discipleship. When the enemies of life put him to death, you raised him up by your power, and likewise you raise us up and unite us with Christ, that we too may be an honored dwelling place for your Holy Spirit. Therefore, with the church united in your name, the saints and glory, and all creation, we join in singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, full of your glory, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Knowing that you are in spirit with all the company of saints, the Christians around the globe, we now invite you to share the bread and the cup with these words, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us be in an attitude of prayer. Christ Jesus, at this table we have feasted on your very life and are strengthened for our journey. Send us out to proclaim your good news and serve others in your name. Amen. 
Friends, receive now the benediction. May God, the creator, strengthen you. May Jesus, the beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the comforter, keep you in peace. And all God's people said, Amen. Friends, go in peace, be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. <laughs>